Hello fellow Scratchers. Ever wondered how that enemy AI manages to move through a level, navigating around corners, skipping dead ends and finding that shortest route to the player? I'm Griffpatch, and today we will be delving into the world of enemy AI pathfinding. You may be interested to know that the same pathfinding scripts that we are about to learn about are also used for calculating things like light flow in Paper Minecraft. I wonder, after you've watched this video, whether you'll be able to tell me how they are linked. Drop me a comment if you know the answer. I really love this project. It looks so complex. So how on earth do we go about creating it? We'll begin with a blank new project. And we're going to keep Scratch Cat this time. They will be pleased. We need him much smaller though. So enter the value 30 into their size box. And we'll also change the sprite name to Cat. Next, add a new sprite from the library. I'll go for an apple. And this will be our goal, since Scratch Cat loves them so much. Set its size to 60%. Now, the next step requires a little more creativity. Create a new sprite, naming it Maze. And now we need to draw. Make sure your pen colour is set to pure black for any walls, and set the pen width to nice and chunky, perhaps a width of 16. Now start by drawing a large rectangle around the border of the costume. Next, draw a chunky maze, leaving plenty of space around for the cat to navigate, keeping the lines pure black. Now I'd advise for starters making the maze similar size to the one I'm drawing here, while we are working on our scripts. The more complex maze I showed earlier will have to wait. So with your simple maze drawn, click into the code tab and add a when green flag clicked. Go to XY of 0 by 0 to centre the maze on the stage. So we want to find the shortest route between Scratch Cat and the apple. We could start trundling off around the maze, handling wall collisions and taking a stab at the best direction to turn at each point, but bearing in mind that there are potential dead ends, and worse, looping corridors, it would be best to plan our desired route in advance. So create a new sprite, and we'll name it Path. We are going to split the maze up into small square regions. Draw a 30 by 30 pixel tile, just less than 8 large grid squares in width and height. We can use a selection tool to drag it so it snaps to the centre. I've coloured it a light pastel red with a saturation of around 10. Next we draw an arrow pointing to the right. Make sure this is also pure black in colour. We're going to use this sprite to make a visual route or pathway through the maze. In the code tab, when green flag clicked, show the arrow tile. So, have you ever noticed how it can be so much easier to solve a maze by starting at the end and working backwards? This is exactly what we are going to do now. So we start by going to Apple. Point in direction 0, which is up, and go to back layer. I'll just make sure Scratch Cat and the Apple sprites are in good positions and then we'll run the project. The tile should appear behind Apple, a good start. To begin drawing a path, we want to try and place a tile above the existing one. So move forward by 32 steps, that's one whole tile. Now we create a clone of ourselves, and then quickly, leaving the clone where it is, we move ourselves back by minus 32 steps to where we started. If I click that script, we can see the new clone has appeared. We want to do the same for all four possible directions around us. The simplest way to do this is to add a turn clockwise by 90 degrees, turn right, and then run the same move script four times in a row. This leaves us facing upwards once more, having travelled full circle, and has left a rather attractive diamond pattern around the apple, with the arrows all pointing outwards in the direction of travel. So let's wrap the moving script in a repeat for loop. And we'll make a new custom block named Try Moving in All Directions, it's a mouthful, and run without screen refresh. That will contain this loop script to ensure all four clones get created together. I'll drop a call to this custom block at the end of the green flag script so it runs when the project runs. Just test that to confirm it's still making the same pattern. What we want to do now is continue these arrows outwards from the apple until they reach Scratch Cat over here. But what about the maze walls? 
If I place the apple next to a wall and run the script, see how this arrow has appeared right over the wall. Well, that's not right. Our paths should never cross a wall. We can stop this by placing an if around the create clone block here. And ensure we are not touching black and only then create clone of myself. Running the project again confirms that this has worked as the offending arrow has been removed. Super. Okay, now it's magic time. I just know you're going to love this bit. We've successfully coded a script that moves outwards, checking for collisions. So what if each new clone were to continue to do the same thing, and each tried to spread out to their surrounding tiles, and then those spread out again, like the ripples on water moving outwards from the apple? Well, let's find out. Drop a when I start as a clone block. This will trigger for all four of the new tiles we just created. So, for now, add in a wait one second. This is just so that we can watch things happen. You may actually want to use a smaller value than this. And then, simply add a try moving in all directions block to finish it off. Now look at this, it's important. Can you see how running this script will create a clone? And creating a clone will again run this script. What we have created here is a recursive loop. Without anything to stop them, recursive loops can run forever and they will really lag out your project. But we'll come back to this in a second. I've held off long enough. I'm dying to run the project and see what we have created. Oh yes, this is exactly what we wanted. The tiles are now cloning themselves and spreading all around the maze, flowing outwards from Apple and even navigating around corners. At some point, they will certainly find Scratchcat. And just like solving a maze backwards, we can then reverse the route and find our way back to the apple. Hmm, in fact, I have an idea. Come into the costume editor and flip this arrow around to point left. I can hold down shift as I rotate it to ensure it snaps to 45 degree increments. There, look, with the arrows reversed, the map suddenly reveals its true purpose. If I want to take Scratchcat from any place on this map to the apple, the arrows show me the way to go. Let me move the apple and run the project again. Each time the map is generated, it shows me the shortest route to get to the apple from any point on the map. This is really useful. It allows all the enemies on a level to seek you out using the same map. Okay, I'm getting carried away. I had a word of warning about this recursive loop. So, this script creates clones and the new clones in return run this script. This could run forever and then wow, super lag. But we have two protections against this. One, Scratch will not create more than 300 clones before it refuses to create any more. And two, we specifically don't create a clone if we are touching black. Which brings me to another really important point in our design. Remember how the arrows on our path tiles are also coloured black? This was purposeful, because it means that not only do we stop the tiles being placed on a maze wall, but also a tile will not be placed down when another tile is already there. Otherwise, they would just be stacking on top of each other and the script wouldn't get very far. But the black colour stops them. Black walls, black arrows. Okay, there's another little problem we need to solve here, where the tiles are getting misaligned at the borders of the screen. This is just down to Scratch's sprite fencing. We can fix it by setting the size to 300 before we move, and then setting it back to 100 afterwards. This allows them to go off screen and come back on again in exactly the same place. I'll just confirm that that worked. Yes, that's much better. While we're addressing potential issues, let's also add in an if around the initial try move script under the green flag here, and make sure we are also not touching black. We don't want to begin tracing routes if the apple starts in a bad place. Finally, we should remove this wait one. How fast do you think this map will generate without it here? Wow, really fast is all I can say. In fact, it's pretty instantaneous. Exciting stuff. However, this is all nice and good, but how do we get Scratch Cat to follow these arrows? Hmm, well, the simplest way that I could think of is to colour code our arrows. Go into the costume tab and rename the first costume to Up. 
I'm happy to keep this one's colour the same. Now duplicate the costume, naming it right, and change the colour to be green, a colour value of 35 will do. Then do the same for down, with a colour of blue, around 55, and left, with a colour of purple, around 80. You can choose whatever colours you want, of course. Now back in the scripts, switch costume to up after we point in direction zero, and then use a next costume after turning 90 degrees to the right. This will cycle through the costumes as we rotate by 90 degrees. Run the project now and we are greeted by a lovely display of coloured tiles. Quite beautiful really, I like it. And what's more, I just know Scratch Cat will love it too. Let's teach him to read it. Click into the Scratch Cat sprite. In the costume editor, create a new costume named Mask and draw a fill square, perfectly centred in the painting area. Mine is around 48 by 48 pixels, the size of 12 by 12 grid squares. Now, remember also we shrunk Scratch Cat by 30%, so this square will also be shrunk down. If you are using a different size sprite, you'll need to size the square accordingly. Now, back in the scripts, we want to be able to track what colour is under this little square mask and turn Scratch Cat accordingly. So, create a new custom block named Get Next Direction. And switch right away to the mask costume. Now check if, with an if-else, it is touching colour. With the project running, we can click the colour swatch and pick the colour from any tile pointing upwards. Now we could use a point in direction block here, but instead let's make a new variable named next dir for this sprite only, and set that to direction zero instead. That's up. Duplicate the if-else block three more times and we'll check for the right colour with a direction of 90, down with 180, and left with minus 90. All four of these colours must match the up, right, down and left colours. If we take this new block, add it to a point in direction of next dir, and then a switch costume back to costume 1, then we can click the script to run it and we should find that our cat ends up pointing in the same direction as whatever arrow tile is behind them. Super! I'll just do this a few more times to check. Cool. Let's get Scratch Cat moving. Make another block named Follow Path. Leave the run without screen refresh clear as this script will keep running while the cat is moving around. So to start our cat's journey in a forever loop, move forward by two steps. And then after that, place the get next direction, point in direction and switch costume scripts we just created underneath. Lastly, we want a when green flag clicked to kick off the follow path script. Great, let's run the project and see what we have made. And off Trundle's Scratch Cat. This is working surprisingly well. Ha, things go a little wrong once he reaches the apple. Oops, more on that later. Let's add a key to reposition Scratch Cat. Add in a when space key pressed. Go to mouse pointer. Now I can just tap the spacebar and have them appear at my mouse, and he obediently sets off in the direction of the apple once more. That's neat! Where this project has room for improvement is in our cat's turning. You see at present how he turns so quickly that he often walks down the edge of a tile and this can lead to him looking like he's overlapping the walls too. How about we kill two birds with one stone and smooth out his turning? I've scripted many ways of allowing sprites to turn smoothly in my years on Scratch, but while working on this tutorial, I stumbled upon a clever trick that does it really simply in just a couple of blocks. We start with a sprite pointing in direction A, say 90 degrees in my example and B is the direction we want to face, minus 160 degrees. But we want A, the cat, to turn towards B smoothly, and the problem is we don't want to end up rotating the long way round. A clever trick is to rotate the entire problem so that B is pointing upwards. We can do this by turning left by the value of B, minus 160. 
This leaves us with a much simpler problem to solve. The cat is now facing in the direction minus 110, and we can see that we want to turn to face upwards. Well, that's easy. We just need to turn right by 110. That's just the inverse of the new value A, which is the current direction of Scratch Cat. To turn smoothly in that direction, we just divide this number up into smaller chunks. Let's see if we can implement that. Start by creating a new custom block named Turn Towards. With a numeric input of Direction, a label with Smoothing, followed by another input named Smooth. We turn left by the input direction we want to point in, that's the red one. Then we must turn back right by the same input direction again, so that we are pointing back towards A. After all, this is where we are turning from. And then we subtract the current sprite's direction reporter, that's the blue one, but divide it by smooth so that we only move a fraction towards the goal direction. And that, my friend, is it. What a neat little solution. I really like that. Just be careful to use the right direction variables here. Let's use this script. Simply replace the point in direction with our new turn towards block and use a smoothing value of 6. Run the project now and bask in the beauty of that smooth rotation. How very clever. All this pressing space makes me think it would be better if each press created its own Scratch Cat clone. We should be able to do that pretty easily. Click into the stage sprite and add a when space key pressed. Create clone of cat. Triggering from the stage avoids accidentally creating clones from other clones. Now back into our cat sprite. We bring in a when I start as clone and move the go to mouse pointer block into there instead. We can delete the old when space key pressed from here now. Then lastly, we make use of the follow path block once more for this clone. Run the project, and now with each press of the space key, a fresh new cat spawns, happily trundling off towards the apple. Yeah, lucky that that apple is so large, there's plenty to go round. I have to say that these cats are rather building up around the apple now. I'd like to do something about that. Perhaps we can just fade them out once they reach their goal. Add a hide block to the when green flag clicked, and delete the follow path block. We'll only use the clones from now on to represent the moving cats. Now come down to the when I start as clone receiver, and we'll duplicate this so that we have two events triggering off the start of each clone. Remove the follow path from the first receiver and replace with a show block. Then we'll wait until either we are touching Apple or touching the edge of the screen. The touching edge is just a sanity check in case we lose a cat off the beaten track. Then, once it's reached the end of the goal, we repeat 10 and change ghost effect by 10 to fade the cat away. Finally delete this clone. For the second when I start as clone, just remove the go to mouse pointer. We only want to keep the follow path script, nothing else. By having these scripts separate, we can keep the cat moving while we'll simultaneously fade them out. Let's give it a test. Smack the space key and watch the cats gracefully fading away when they reach their target. Excellent work. <sighs> now, just because it's extra fun, let me show you how we can trigger a change of goal when the apple is moved. Click into the apple sprite, add a when green flag clicked, and set drag mode to draggable. That's in the sensing category. We'll then loop forever. But right away, we want to wait until the mouse is down. Then we broadcast a new message, reset path. Followed by another broadcast to find path. Let's hook up those events. Click into the cat sprite. Little note, try to ignore those Apple X and Y variables that have appeared on the stage. I was trying something else and decided against it. You won't need them. We are going to add a when I receive reset path and then simply delete this clone. This keeps things running smoothly in the demo by cleaning up the old cats. Now click into the path sprite. Again, we add a when I receive reset path. 
and simply delete this clone to take away the previous pathways. Next, add a when I receive find path. Make a new custom block named find path, run without screen refresh, and move all the scripts from when the green flag was clicked hat block into there, ensuring to add the find path script back under the when green flag clicked, and also under the new when I receive find path receiver. Now then, this is a really fun test. You're going to love this. Now run the project in full screen mode and grab the apple and drag it around the maze. How awesome is this? The pathfinding is calculating in real time and all the arrows are updating dynamically to show the best route. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Then I can still press the spacebar and drop some cats. Wow, what an awesome little project this is turning out to be. Now you may ask, how could I use this in a game? Okay, so I created this project the way it is, to avoid the technicalities of working with lists and 2D grid systems, but in practice, lists and grids would be the way to go to support larger or more detailed mazes, and off-screen enemies too. It would also run even faster than it does now. Importantly, it would also mean that these arrow tiles would not have to be visible. That would be nice. However, we can't do that this time, but I do have one trick up my sleeve that will at least allow us to hide the arrows. So if you want to try it, then go into the path sprite and add a when I receive hide path and hide the sprite. Then under the when I start as a clone, add a forever loop and show. This gets in really quickly before most other scripts run in a game frame. Lastly, click into the stage bright and add when green flag clicked, forever, broadcast, hide path. That's it. Run the project and voila, the pathway has gone. And yet, you can see the cats are still behaving as if the coloured pathway is still there. That's because to them, it is still there. We are showing the pathway at the start of the frame and then hiding it again using a broadcast from the stage. This will trigger after the cats have moved but before the screen is updated for us to see. A neat trick that at least gets us to where we might want to be. And this is where I leave you. If you fancy seeing how far you can go with upgrading your maze then you can try to draw one lined up with the grid which lets you create something as cool as this. Note. I have also set the cat script to point in the right direction as soon as they clone. To do this, just add a wait zero to the beginning of both the when I start as clones in the cat sprite. And then check next direction and point in direction next dir before beginning to wait until touching here. And that's it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, then please do smash the like button and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to avoid missing my next exciting video. But until that time, thanks for watching and scratch on guys. Yeah.